You can ask God questions like, how much do you love me, God, and get an answer back. We're not going to understand how much God loves us unless he teaches us. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. If you have a question, ask God and give it to you. He'll try to tell you, well, I gave my son for you, or I died on the cross for you. That's how much I love you. <laughs> you can ask God, how righteous am I? By faith in Jesus' free gift of righteousness. Perfect rod. You can't get any more righteous than Christ's righteousness as a gift given to you. It's not by your good works, it's by Jesus' good works on your account. you got to believe that God can forgive you of all of your sins. God can cleanse you from all of your sins. God can make you as righteous as Jesus is as a gift. No one's coming into God's presence without Jesus' righteousness on them. And, like I said, Satan tries to stop us with lies or whatever. You're not good enough. God doesn't want to talk to you, <laughs> etc. No, God loves me to be close to him. I search for God with all of my heart. I find him. Draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. In God's presence is a fullness of joy. <laughs> my sheep hear my voice. So if we would obey God, get saved... Read the Bible. Let me teach the truth through it. Pray. Hear what God's trying to tell you to do. Get busy doing it. Pray. Obey. Resist Satan trying to stop you with lies or whatever. If you do fall into sin with Satan's temptations, repent. Return back to ask God to forgive you, getting back to obeying, get back in, to praying and obeying and resisting again. And God delights in that. See, God rewards those who believe in his truth. Those who draw close to him. Those that obey his voice with this joy and this peace that the world doesn't understand or have. But we can have it if we want to believe in God's truth. If we want to try to hear his voice and obey him. Sometimes God speaks to us through visions and dreams. Not too much with dreams with me, but I get a lot of visions, just these short little pictures like cartoons in my mind, and then God's Holy Spirit speaks powerfully through them. It's like I could get this vision of uh, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the angels in the room with me. And I can think, well, I'd like to ask God questions. He seems to be very close here. And uh, I asked God a question the other day. I said something like... Uh, how can I glorify you most? And then he gave me this prophetic knowledge about how his creation can glorify him the most. It was very powerful. And I asked God one time in one of these visions, uh, what is my purpose, God? And he said, to glorify me. Then I started learning more about glorification of God. <laughs> and I've tried to teach on that now. One great question is, what do you want me to do now? I don't want to do my will. I want to pray and wait for God to speak to me. And Satan tries to tell me a thousand things to do other than God's will, but i got to keep resisting him. No, I wait for God to speak to me. When it lines up with Scripture, then I might follow that voice. Not follow Satan off away from the Good Shepherd into the wolf's den or something today to get devoured by him. No, staying close to Jesus. When Satan comes around, Jesus can take the crook and just hit him over the head with it and drive him away. You're safe with me, Rod, says the Good Shepherd. We need to believe that. Jesus is our Good Shepherd. God is with us wherever we go. God's like a perfect father with his eyes on his children, making sure they're safe and providing for them. It's like if we believed the truth, we wouldn't be worried about money or protection or anything like that. God's here. God's got all the money in heaven and earth. He loves me. He takes good care of me. Your father knows that you need these things. Seek first his kingdom. He'll provide them for you. If he didn't spare his own son, he'll freely give me everything else I need. Just get away from Satan and worrying about your bank account and the money become a worthless today. No, if I need money, God can give me a billion dollars if he wants. Perfect peace. Perfect daddy God's here. Perfect rich daddy God's here. And I'm safe with him. I'm like a humble little child with my perfect father God. 
don't, if we're having problems, sufferings, ask God, what about these? How do you want to try to solve these problems? Do you want to give me help for my times of trouble or something? And bring good out of them. Like a motto I have, I have to live in an evil and suffering world, but God can help me through it, bring good out of it for me, make me happy in it, help me not to be bothered by it. I could be looking at World War III on the TV and be dancing with Jesus around my living room. <laughs> because Jesus will say to me, don't let it bother you, I control it. You've got to believe God's in full control of everything at all times. World War II, 9-11, World War III coming. If you're in the lion's den, he's in control. If you're in a fiery furnace, he's in control. If you're in the wilderness for 40 years, he's in control. He won't die till he wants you to die, and he can even help you through martyrdom. There's nothing to be afraid of. If you really believe in perfect Father God with you, and it's like his joy and his peace and his fulfillment's worth a billion dollars, you can't buy that stuff. And you got heaven to come after you die, and you get closer to him, and you, you know how great he is here on earth. You don't have to wait to get to heaven to have love, joy, and peace, and great emotions or something. It's not waiting till you die or something to be happy. God could be making you happy now if you get close to him, if you get filled with his Holy Spirit. Love, joy, and peace, fullness of joy in his presence, perfect peace, like Paul saying, don't worry about anything, and the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds. This is available to us if we want to believe in this stuff. So we need to ask God questions. Like, what does the future look like, Jesus? And get an answer back. I had this vision one time. I was talking to Jesus on a park bench or something. I said, what does the future look like, Jesus? And he said, economic collapse, famine, rioting, apostasy, and World War III. And I was thinking, well, that doesn't sound like a great future. That doesn't sound like you're making America great again. <laughs> and then I go into this vision of dance with Jesus around World War III, and there's like tanks and everything, people getting shot and everything around me. And I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, wow, this is something to be concerned about. And I look at Jesus when I'm dancing with him, and he just looks at me, and he says, don't let a bother you, Rod. I control this. We have to believe in God's control. God was in control of Shadrach in a fiery furnace. God's in control of my life with whatever problems and troubles I go through. And God can tell me what to do and I can get busy doing it for success today. We should ask God questions like, How much can you protect me, God? Get an answer back. He'll try to reveal I'm in control of everything. I got angels, everything. How much can you provide for me? I control everything. I got all the gold in heaven and earth. You're my beloved child. You're my son's bride, etc. How much can you take good care of me? Well, it's like he's been taking care of me for 60 years. I just trust he's going to keep taking care of me, even if things get worse. It's like you don't need to see a miracle until you need a miracle. I'm not at the Red Sea with an army chasing me today. I don't have to see the sea parted. But if I do need to see the sea parted or stop God to stop an enemy, it can happen. Like in the days of Moses. Asking God questions like, why is sin harmful? We're not going to want to stop sinning unless we think it's harmful to us. We're not going to want to obey God unless we understand it's the best way to choose. If we can't think of something better to do than sin, then we'll sin. We've got to find out from God what's best to do now. Why is it the best thing to do now? And then say, well, I don't want to sin. I want to do the best thing, what God's telling me to do. Understanding the consequences. If you choose sin, this is the consequence. If you choose obedience, this will be the consequence. You decide, Rod. So whatever God's trying to teach us, Satan's trying to teach us the opposite. And we've got to choose to listen to God's voice of truth, not Satan's voice of lies. If we ever want to be successful God's way. God loves me all the time, unconditionally. God makes me righteous as a free gift. I don't have to do good works to earn it. My happiness comes from God spiritually in his presence. These kinds of truths to believe in from the Bible, from God. If we ask him questions, get answers back and believe the truth he's teaching us. 
So that's what we need to do. Ask God questions, get answers back if we ever want to learn to be successful doing His will in our life and have a good judgment day after we die. We want to act like Jesus who got wisdom from God and sought to obey God. Then we'll get great rewards and great careers like Jesus did on our judgment day or like Paul did or something. If we want to listen to Satan and follow him and have a mind full of his lies and be foolish, then we'll, if we want to follow Satan, we'll go to hell with Satan on Judgment Day. It's our free will choice. So that's what we need to do. Ask God questions and get answers back.